I'm talking to Dr. Paul Henney in Roanoke, Virginia, and Dr. Henney's practice has an unusual new product that he's introducing to his patients. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yes, in the uh, spring of the year 2023, um, I was at a meeting uh, that was uh, put on by a uh, fellow dentist named Tom Larkin. And at that meeting, um, a PhD microbiologist was speaking. Her name was Emily Stein. Emily Stein had got her PhD at the University of California, Berkeley. And then she went on and did a postdoctorate work at Stanford, I think for, I think eight years, where she studied epidemiology and rheumatology. Emily was very close to her grandmother. And her, grandma, and her grandmother was in assisted living situation but uh, Emily would communicate her with her regularly uh, on a daily basis via computer. Her grandmother's uh, mouth was not being taken care of at the assisted living center that she was located at, and that eventually led to her grandmother having to have some teeth extracted. Uh, subsequent to the teeth being extracted, her grandmother had a stroke. I mean, after the teeth was that quickly after the teeth? I mean, was it directly related to it that? It was, I think, within two days she had a stroke. Really? Because basically the teeth were infected, the gums around the teeth were infected, and the process of removing the teeth basically allowed the bacteria that were around her teeth, the infection, to enter her bloodstream and ultimately for her to throw a clot in her brain. So obviously this would, this would be upsetting to anybody to have this happen to any of your relatives. It was particularly upsetting to Emily because she knew enough about microbiology to think that, oh my gosh, uh, maybe we could have prevented this. So Emily flew down. She took a saliva sample of her grandmother's mouth. She studied the bacteria that were present and the ratios that were present. She identified the pathogens that were present. And as a result of that, she developed a what's called a prebiotic and most of us are, are familiar with probiotics, which are active bacteria, sometimes even yeast. Mostly used for stomach disorders. Usually for GI, GI issues tract. to try to rebalance, say, the gut, because you may perhaps... Well, there's prebiotics for that as well. But this is a different animal, evidently. Right. A prebiotic doesn't have any live bacteria in it. A prebiotic is really kind of a new, what I would call a nutraceutical meaning that it's designed to starve out certain bacteria by its contents as well as promote up others. So it's, it's used for rebalancing as well. We need to think about the, the mouth as a microbiome with hundreds of different types of bacteria in it that are competing with each other as well as in symbiotic relationships with each other. And when a mouth gets in a state of what we call dysbiosis, out of balance, the pathogens predominate. And when the pathogens so the predominate, bad guys predominate. Yeah. When the bad guys predominate, then disease states take hold. That in the mouth, that would take the form of dental decay, inflammation of your gums that we commonly call gingivitis, or periodontal disease, or all three in some cases. So. When we have those disease states present, it's automatically uh, known that there is a dysbiosis in the mouth. There's an imbalance of the bacteria in the mouth that are allowing the pathogens to predominate on a level that they're causing disease. And they don't stay in your mouth. They, uh, they don't stay in become your mouth. involved in your whole right. body. Now, this product that she developed, is this uh, something that you apply in the dental office? Tell me about the product. How would I get access to that? She developed this prebiotic, which is as, as simple as a Tic Tac mint, kind of tastes like a tin really? Tic Tac mint. And uh, you just allow it to dissolve in your mouth. It needs to be regularly present in your mouth. You need to use it several times a day. I advise my patients to use it three to four times a day so that the, the aspects of the prebiotic are consistently present in the saliva. And as long as they're consistently present in the saliva, then the pathogens are managed down to a level that they can't cause problems and the good bacteria are managed up. Wow. So that's something I can do on my own. It's I don't need to come to see own. you. 
I th you know, in in the many thir over 35 years of that I've been practicing, I've never seen a product that had this kind of effect as well as potential to eliminate dental diseases in the general population. So, so this is actually a tool that, that the individual can use on their own to take control of what's happening in their mouth. One of the myths really about dentists and dentistry is that uh, people believe that I can pre prevent disease in you, Stan, when in fact I cannot. The only, only person that can prevent disease in you is you. So and you're saying as a dentist, all you can do is react to the disease that's already in my body. Uh, up until now, you haven't been able to really affect the cause of that disease. That's right. I mean, most of the medical profession and dental profession and many other profession, professions are very reactive. I don't uh, feel well. Fix me. Right. And so oftentimes people don't even arrive at my dental office until they have have a problem. They're they're in my a, gums are dizzy, yeah, yeah, I've got a, my a tooth hurts or something. state of some kind. Yeah. So, you know, that's the point of entry for a lot of people. So we're already in a reactionary mode at, at first contact. So now we've got these new tools, Emily Stein's prebiotic that she's patented uh, is one of them, certainly a major advancement in dentistry that hardly anybody knows about it. This is so new that you're one of the first few people to know about it, as I understand yes, it. Yes, it's, it's so new that hardly any dentists in the world know about it right now. So one of my new missions, if uh -huh. you will, is to help her get the word out about this. And we're actually helping it get, it, get out uh, propagated in Europe and across the United States as well. So this uh, could change dentistry entirely. I mean, this could help dentistry become more of a health-oriented practice rather than yeah, if, a disease-oriented if, if, practice. If ideas like Emily's are, are propagated throughout our society, let's say in uh, public health clinics, let's say in nursing homes, let's say in uh, memory care, facilities, let's say in elementary schools. You can, you can come up with all kinds of places where this could be applied. If this was widely available and used all the time, we are in a position literally, and this is hard to conceptualize, that we could prevent dental decay in children. Imagine that. That would be the first time we w wouldn't have to just hit them with fluoride and hope for the best. So if I started my child on these mints, then the chances of them having gum disease, decay, plaque, all of the dental problems that you've spent 35 years fixing, that's going to start declining? It has the potential to do that if people understand what she's created and, and it's widely applied. Let me oh. give you an example. She uh, did a study in an assisted living home situation. They did the, the trial group against the placebo group. They uh, had the trial group use her lozenges for six weeks. And, in, and this is not necessarily a, a group of people that has the highest level of oral hygiene. Oh, These aren't yeah. the best flossers in the world or anything like that. These are older people with certain disabilities. So really their oral care isn't that great. And in that trial group, in that test group, the amount of bleeding and plaque reduced almost 80 percent. My that, goodness. Which is almost hard to believe. My goodness. So the prebiotic actually has the capacity to penetrate into plaque and affect the bacteria that's in the plaque around our teeth and man, again, manage down the pathogens and manage up the good supportive wow. bacteria. And we're not just talking oral hygiene here, we're talking whole body health. This right. is affecting such things as Alzheimer's and heart disease and joint pain and all the, the things. The mouth is a gateway evidently to these, is, is yes. that what I'm hearing? So yeah, we're circling back to Emily's purpose of developing this was to prevent in other people what happened to her grandmother because she recognized that these pathogen, pathogens in the mouth end up all over the body including the brain and the heart and blood vessels and everywhere else 
and they uh, exist in the mouth right. and they're so coming from we, the mouth if we focus our attention on making sure the microbiome of the mouth is properly balanced and healthy then that has broad systemic implications we can reduce the possible uh, likelihood of other chronic disease states that we're kind of living with now and sort of accepting as sort of normal when it's not it's no normal no more normal than bleeding gums and bleeding gums is not normal that's an, that's evidence of disease so you may be on the cutting edge of something truly revolutionary in medicine I think this is a major major landmark advancement I think it's probably the biggest advancement in that I have seen during my entire career and there have been some amazing advancements in dentistry since I started in 1984. Amazing, amazing. Well, how do I access this product? Uh, do you have it available? And, and yes, we have it that. available. We make it, I have a number of my patients on it. For instance, I have a number of patients who are excellent at oral hygiene, but they still had chronic tooth decay problems. If because look, the if, products they were using weren't doing anything. Right, because you, you could look in their mouth and you wouldn't see a lot of plaque. You would look in their mouth and you would generally see gums that were relatively healthy. But if you did a saliva sample on that person, what you would find is a disproportionate amount of the bacteria bad guys, that cause guys, dental yeah. decay, which is yeah. a specific one called Streptococcus mutans. And that particular bacteria was significantly out of balance and was destroying their teeth in spite of the fact that they had excellent oral hygiene and from a visual level everything looked like it was good. So it's very deceptive. We've got to kind of get in and look at things on a, on a bacteriological level to really understand why certain things are occurring. So you're looking at the mouth not an, at the mechanical level, more the biological level to find out what's causing the plaque, the disease, these pathogens right. getting into the body. Right. So this is the big, this is the big paradigm shift that's occurring in dentistry right now. Is moving away from just mechanical approaches to try to resolve biological problems or mechanical and pharmacologic, pharmacological approaches to solve bacteriological problems which are causing whole body right. disease. So, as we all know, pharmacological solutions always have side effects, whether it's an antibiotic, whether it's a heart medication, whether it's a uh, cholesterol-lowering medication, all of these things have significant side effects. So, and they don't necessarily cure anything. They just tamp it they down. They slow down the right. progress of a disease. So that has uh, if we, we really just get in kind of a dependency state with these drugs and these mechanical solutions and we're not dealing with the reason it's happening in the first place, which is the bacteria that are driving the problem. And in this particular case, there's a disproportionate amount of the bad bacteria present that are doing that. Boy, that is, that is amazing. Well, if this sort of uh, new biological approach to dentistry is something you'd like to access, and I can't imagine that you wouldn't, call Dr. Paul Henney in Roanoke, Virginia, and you can get access to these products and improve the health of your body through improving the health of your mouth. So thank you so much. Thank you, Sam. Contact Dr. Paul Henney.